All right. Well, welcome back to the After Hours Podcast, November 3rd, episode 5 of 2024. And we got quite the crew of killers on this one. We have uh, been talking about it on social media, and it's probably no secret now. Devin Wills killed your biggest buck to date. And to sit, we got to see it in person. Thing is an absolute giant. And that was a uh, surprise, not a surprise. Oh yeah, on, October thirty first. Yeah, it was. It was. It was awesome. Hi, <laughs> you're welcome, Devin. Oh, Thanks, Ryan. Ryan Howard, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, I guess that's a good spot to start right there, you know, because Devin, you, uh, for the listeners or viewers that don't know, I mean, Devin, you filmed that one for. Is this going on the third season now? Third season, yep. Yep. So oh. filming in the fall, working on the farm the rest of the time. And normally on Halloween, probably would normally find yourself in the tree with uh, Owen. But, Rye, you made your way down south to do some different photo shoot type things and video shoot type things with the new Hoy Bows. And that is where we kind of got the opportunity to find ourselves in the woods. So, I don't know where you guys want to take it from there. But I, I think we should start with what Devin told me and Owen the night before. Before he left that day, tell us exactly what you said. So this is on October 30th PM. Yep. PM. Yep. I, uh, I said, uh, I expect a phone call at eight o'clock and I expect one from you guys following, uh, the next day. And sure enough, it was right at eight o'clock. Is that right? Yeah, hold it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nailed it. Yep. We can all corroborate that yeah. conversation. It's yeah. it's a true fact, and it's actually on GoPro, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Whoa! Okay. I love it. Okay, well, why were you so confident going into Halloween morning? What what is this property? How's it set up? Tell us about the buck. What's what's the story? So I uh, was hunting the farm to the east of that last year, um, and I was really on the outside looking in, and you know I heard all the rutting activity, you know, grunting and stuff like that last year. And actually I tried to get permission on that farm three years ago and I moved to the area and never could get in contact with the landowner. And she actually called me about a month ago and gave me the go ahead. So I instantly threw up some cameras and the corn was still standing until uh, two and a half weeks ago. So cams were super slow. And once that corn came out, they just started tearing scrapes up, making new scrapes. And he was the most consistent buck on all the cameras and where i killed him he was the most consistent just going back and forth working a straight line and he did that same exact thing the morning i killed him gotcha okay so going to the 30th if i'm not mistaken is so the 30th is when it's raining correct thunderstorms coming through yes weather yep. event yep and the wind switch to the northwest right yes yep. so obviously i got to see it caleb myself owen rye we all got to see this but paint for the viewer the access you know because it's it's certainly no short walk no 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 where you're going right um so it's the spot where i killed is just one big draw I, I would call it running along the ditch there and the rest of it's just wide open ag um and it was just a perfect win for the access there it was actually a west straight west when we got there um so we came in from the north from the south and actually got to the stand right at shooting light. You know, I kind of underestimated that walk. We usually drive about halfway, but with the two two inches of rain, didn't want to tear up the field. So we walked, and, you know, the visibility was – we had that overcast. So we couldn't even see, you know, really until 7.30. And so we had, you know, plenty of time to get the camera and stuff out. And seven from 7.30 to 8, we didn't see anything, and he was the only deer. And yeah, but access was it was perfect. You know, it's one and done. I was hoping it for anyway, as you expect. But because um, after that, the sw- wind switched straight south, and that was no bueno. So, mm-hmm. you know what I find interesting about this whole thing, Devin, is you actually called exactly what that deer was going to do. We talked about it the day before, and we were like, "He's going to come right down through here, and this is where my shot will be." And he did the exact same thing. So that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I, I explained the same thing to the kid that was filming me, and. It was just crazy, you know, spot on. It's beautiful when it works like you want it to, huh? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to get used to it, put it that way. 
<laughs> worked perfect, <laughs> man. Because I was yeah. like, don't you want to be on the east side of that? I mean, that opening, yeah. you know, because he was going to come through there with the west wind. And you're like, nope, yeah. I'll have him killed before he gets there. And I was like, all right, get him. <laughs> <laughs> you did. I love yeah. it. Oh, was awesome. I love it. And, and so you're basically, you were hunting the scrape line. Is that correct? Yes. And you had, yep. Right in the middle of it. Yeah. I mean, yep. what perfect timing for all of those different events to occur. I mean, and obviously you made the most of it. Um, no slouch of a shot. That's one thing that like, you know, can't stay it enough is like, that's, uh, you know, you made a great shot at a long distance and that's probably attributed to the constant peer pressure you put on Owen to practice. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah yeah that was no. a that was a poke people probably take that for granted not to interrupt you there Devin. but 41 yard shot at a buck is a no easy task no way yeah yes yeah, so- let alone the buck of your lifetime you know what i mean right because right. this is potentially your biggest buck to date correct potentially yep gotcha leaning towards that but i don't want to say anything yet <laughs> fair enough so you make the shot uh walk us through you know, what started going through your mind after you reviewed the footage there? So initially when I shot, I thought it was a great shot. So my man, did I smoke him? He's like, oh, you smoked him. So I felt, you know, cloud nine gives everything and watched the footage back. And I went from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows because it looked like I just punched his shoulder and barely got any penetration. (laughs) So, you know, I sent video to uh, Rye and Owen and Josh and we got to talking and it was we were all on the same page, maybe, maybe not what we were thinking and blew it up on the big screen. And you could see my fletchings kind of caught the wind and blew oh, about three inches to the right of my broadhead. So sure enough, it actually went, oh, I think we had seven inches of penetration. And when I pulled the broadhead out of the, you know, I pulled it out of his heart when we were getting him. So it was weird, you know, just no very, very spotty blood and then walk up to him. So. I was very sick up until we found him. Yeah, one of one of the things for me, and I never got to watch it on the big screen, so Ryan, no one, if you guys saw something different, but right away what eliminated the quote-unquote typical shoulder shot was how long that arrow stayed lodged in. You know, you watch it hit, and he runs around through all the trees and the branches, and I feel like on your typical shoulder hit, that would have yanked it out uh, if you didn't get the penetration you thought. Now, the thing that we all talked about was just the – lack of blood we expected to find um, just with where the, you know, hit was having it lodged in, probably not getting on the offside. And that's in really what we found. I mean, I bet you we couldn't have filled up a bottle cap with the blood that was found. And obviously I'll never forget, man. You're like, I think I see something up there. And I was just like, okay, let's keep walking. And it's a big leg sticking out, not an antler. It's literally a leg just sticking straight in there. And you just were like, there he is. And you yeah. just started screaming. And then everybody <laughs> started running. No one started running. I mean, it was just yeah. like, you talk about I that see. roller coaster ride. I look back and I can see Owen. It was like he was in hurdles back in high school track. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, not, I wish I'd have been there for that. <laughs> not quite as agile as I used to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Special. That's when you know it's exciting. Oh, that's yeah. fun, man. Special stuff. I when we got there, I I think all of us were like, "Whoa!" Yeah, on the side. Yeah, because yeah, right. <clears throat> I, you know, different angles of the, on cam. He was. I was like, "Man, he's only 150, 160," and then he stood a little bit farther from the camera. I'm like, oh. "That's when he caught my eye," and we had. I don't remember what night it was. Maybe the 27th, we had super high winds and just super warm. So why don't I just skip the hunt? You know, we had no business being in the tree. So I circled the block and I seen him from the road and I just seen his frame. I'm like, well, he's he's number one. So let's start, let's start this match. <laughs> yeah. Well, is there any other takeaways on it that you guys think is worth noting? I mean, obviously, Owen, you guys probably strategized about it. But, I mean, it's... Pretty textbook hunting a scrape line after a big rain event, you know, perfect yep. access, you know, and just anticipating your shot selection. And I mean, the rest yeah. of history. Yeah. Wow. I was really proud, Devin. I know I never told you that. I said congratulations and all that, but it was like my kid was going off to shoot himself a booner there. I was pretty proud of you. I thought that was cool. So, where was your entry on your on your shot? It was a little. 
it was a little forward and top of shoulder, but it, it punched through there and it got right in the heart. I was surprised. Yeah, up and down was perfect. Um, yeah. And I mean, frankly, you're what, maybe an inch and a half to the right of where you'd want to be. Right. There wasn't much. It just when you look at the frames on the screen, like when you send it on the cell phone, it's like his fletching is three inches to the right. You know, it's hard to tell the exact frame of impact, but that's when you guys blew it up on the screen, right? You could see right where impact was. And obviously that's, it is such an undervalued part of filming your hunts is just the information you can gain so of shot. I mean, just getting to rewatch that over and over and over. Um, I mean, obviously took the blood trail the way you would take anything just slowly. And I think Caleb, you were the one that found the first drop of blood and luckily finding that, I mean, it put us on the right trail. And yeah. the thing that was interesting is just when we talked about like, cause I had expected that with the heart shot and how much was internally bleeding, he should have started coughing up blood. I was expecting to find it a little bit higher, not necessarily your trickling on the ground type of stuff, but sure enough, I mean, what that tells me is like he was dead before you guys even could figure out what happened. Right. And he had to have died right away. Cause I mean, it was 160 yards is what he went. I think that, yeah. Um, but with no blood loss, he probably had that adrenaline and he's not technically bleeding out. So probably why it carried it so much, but I mean, it was as lethal as it gets, man. I mean, yeah. I, uh, I appreciate the phone call. I know I can say that and just getting the chance to go with you was, it was a pretty good way to ring in November. I'll say yeah. that. So. Yeah, it was, it was, it was fun having everybody there for sure. Good old Halloween, but I do think that's interesting on the video sometimes is, you know, on the LCD, a lot of times we see the fletchings. And so we think that's impact. And then if you get it on a big screen, you can actually see the head and the fletchings. They're not always based on the angle of the shooter, angle of the cameraman, maybe wind, uh, all those things. I mean, being able to see where the where the head went in is that's huge. Yeah, and that's a good takeaway too, Mike, is you know, you guys practice in the wind. We shoot here from in the garage and you can see when the wind hits that arrow, it'll just crank it on a forty five big time. So it's good stuff to learn from shooting in the wind like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's a huge body of work from both of you. I mean, as far as the shooting goes, it's something that we seem to be talking about every single podcast. I mean, we talked about on Mike's, his shooting process, uh, the one we just recorded with Gavin last night, or two nights ago, excuse me, where he talked about just refining what his process is in the stand, but most importantly, it was just shooting constantly all, all summer, going into the fall and just the level of confidence that that brought him in the moment, you know, I wasn't even thinking about it. And I mean, to take a 42 yard shot on a Boone and Crockett whitetail that is that big and he does the nice slow roll scrape for you. I mean, you got all the time in the world to think about a million things and then just yeah. to perform flawlessly. I cannot wait. So actually, as we're recording this, it's going to come out tomorrow morning and same day we're going to have the episode and people are going to get to watch it. But your reaction afterwards is so funny. <laughs> I mean, it's like I don't funny is not the right word it's just like exactly what I would uh expect everybody to do you're just like did I get him did I get him and your buddy's like dude you smoked him and it's just like oh. yeah <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah it was it was weird I usually you know when I see a buck of that caliber I'm just you know shaking adrenaline's going but I, I when I first seen him I, I was doing that and then it just clicked like you know if he's coming this is my one shot. And it was just like shield going over kill mode, you know, give me the shot and you're done. That's and cool. Zone in. I love zone it. Zone in. You know, that's what it cool. takes. You know? Yeah. The, one of the coolest things about it's right away. First thing you say is I got to call Owen. I'm not trying to yeah. say you're supposed to say your wife first, but Owen was, <laughs> Owen was the first person that came to mind. For yeah. This. So yeah. He had a deadline to meet. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Eight oh six. Dev, I never got or never got to ask you. Um, so what made that piece like the missing piece? Or it, I have probably five to six times the amount of cover as to the farm to the east. So it was I was just in the travel area, but not where I needed to be. Was it pressured at all prior? Um. You know, there's there's gun hunters in there. So other than shotgun season, as far as I know, I was the only bow hunter in there. So, 
you know, people driving by and stuff like that. But other than that, I think it's just gun gun hunters. So, right, right on. That piece was that was pretty sweet back in there, man. Yeah, it's <laughs> was super thick. But one of the things I took away was just like how windy it was. I don't know if you guys realize this on the track. I mean, we were coming across that cornfield. It was just like wind burn on the face, just like. And then all of a sudden you hit those woods, you go down just a touch and we were just out of it. I mean, it made a ton of sense why on a Northwest wind, it's just one of those pieces is set up so perfectly for what you're keying in on. It's perfect access from the South. You're on the South side of the bedding, but your scrape line is on the South side of the bedding. He's going to scent check and it's all out of the wind. So that's where he wants to be on that particular day. I mean, it, a lot of factors go into, you know, what he's doing right there. And it, you called it, and I couldn't be happier for you, man. So what made you think that these guys were going to get it done so quick? It's that one. <laughs> That's what we do, huh? <laughs> Definitely says killing's our business, and business is good. <laughs> oh, I would not want to be a mature buck on Owen's farm. <laughs> no. Not this year. Yeah. No. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, Not unless Rye's hunting him. <laughs> well where were you gonna go the halloween night oh and where'd you guys go sit and did you have the plans for november 1st already laid out or how'd you guys we did yeah yeah we did i wanted to take a ride down to death row i know he'd heard so much about it and he'd seen it over the years you know i just i wanted to take him down there and have a nostalgic hunt so we already had that planned out thank you owen <laughs> you're welcome sir. I, mean, I wish i could have showed you a couple more big bucks but Rod's been talking about that death row experience. It, it was nostalgic, so uh, you checked the box there, Owen. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, we're down there in death row. We had a good hunt, and we, we just missed one of the targets by. He was in there in daylight, first daylight pictures we had of him. We missed him by a few hours, but we needed to be in there in the a.m. So that was interesting. We were on the right track. We had the right spot picked and everything. You know, we just missed him by a little ways, so I thought that was interesting. I sent Rod the pictures. and. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, we already had planned out. We knew the wind was going to go to south the next day. And I had another spot, Devin and I had been talking about this whole season that we wanted to get into, especially on a morning hunt. We hadn't hunted there all year. And uh, so that's where we went the next morning. And, and, you know, I don't think you can talk about that hunt without talking about that morning. That was a morning that a bow hunter would die for. You know, I, I think just about every hunter just dreams of that cold, frosty morning like that. Wind speeds are real low, so, I mean, you can hear everything. I mean, you know, Radlin's going to carry. All your grunts and everything's going to carry. So it was one of those days. I mean, I remember stopping and looking up at the stars. I say, Rye, you see all those stars up there? <laughs> That's pretty cool. And I told Rye why later, you know, why I was thinking about that. It was pretty cool. So we had a moment there. I, I won't share it with anybody. But at any rate, we had a, we had a good time getting in there. It was, it was a beautiful morning, so. Rye, what do you think, man? I, I told my side of it on the last podcast. Did you? I did. <laughs> you know, I didn't really know what to expect in there. It's a it's a transition between there's food on both ends of it. It's quite a ways off, you know, probably two, three hundred yards each direction. So it's a transition that it just it's the middle of the of the farm basically, and everything kind of comes and goes right through there. So you expect good movement in the morning, good movement in the middle of the day when they're cruising. And so that's why I wanted to get in there. And of course, when it's cold, frosty, and low wind speeds, I love to rattle. And this goes all the way back to Michigan. I had a lot of success, you know, rattling. I would rattle often. And, you know, I killed a lot of bucks that way back in Michigan. So it's still ingrained in me now. When I get those conditions, I almost have to rattle. It just, it forces me. I have no other choice. <laughs> So, you know, we I think this was the second rattling sequence. So first light, and I kept checking the, waiting for the uphill thermal too, that thermal to start rising. That's what I was waiting on. So I kept checking. And finally, when we got that rising thermal, I said, we're good. You know, he can circle downwind or whatever. We should be okay. And then we did the one rattling sequence there early. No response on it. We hadn't seen a deer. Uh, seen a few turkeys, I think, right? But at any rate, on the... On the second one, we smacked the antlers, and I wasn't rattling very long. I'm talking 20 or 30 seconds because I didn't want to get caught rattling. I've, I've had that happen before, too. We're not in a great tree, so if he pops in, you're still rattling. You're, you're probably 
screwed, you know. So at any rate, on the second time, we rattled 20, 30 seconds, and I set the antlers down. I go, right, he's on his way. He's like, all right, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> and so like a minute went by probably. He's like, I want, I'm pretty sure I see a deer down on the draw down there. And I was like, hey, can you tell what it is, you know? And so pretty soon he's like, oh, yeah, definitely deer. Here he comes. It's a buck. And it was one that I've known about since last year. Do you mind if I tell a story, Devin? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this buck is actually one that Devin's wife missed last year, late season. So we knew about the deer, and we'd been kind of watching him. He was on the list this year. I didn't expect to see that deer where we did because he'd always been on the north end of the farm. So he was – I don't know, half to three quarters of a mile from where I would expect to see him. But at any rate, I knew what deer it was right away, and he was on the list. So came to the rattling. You could see when he came up through there, he'd stop and look. He was looking for the fight, you know. So it was pretty exciting. He was coming up through there, lit up by the sun. It was pretty. It was a very pretty moment with that deer Nose coming up through dripping. there. Like, what's that, Rye? Nose was dripping. Yeah, that was pretty neat. It was. That's got to be some cool footage. I can't wait to watch it, actually. I haven't seen it all the way through, so... But, yeah, I mean, he just read the script. He worked right up this lane where I needed him to. I had told Rye earlier in that hunt, I was like, right there's where the shot I would like. I said, I really don't even have to turn my body. I can shoot right that way. The only difficult part was I had to lift my arrow clear up, get between the crotch of the tree to get my bow over on that side. But once that was done, and I think it's probably all on the GoPro. I haven't seen it, but, yeah, <laughs> look at you smirking there. I've been told I get a look in my eye when I'm getting ready to shoot something that's like something uh, you would see in a serial killer. So I hope I don't look like that. But <laughs> at any rate, I mean, he stepped into that lane. At one point, he started to quarter to us like he was going to cross the ditch right there where we were at. And, uh, and then he straightened back out and continued up the lane. I had him just, just about right where I wanted him, and a, a grunt stopped him, and he he twisted just my way like they will sometimes when you grunt stop them. A lot of times they'll look your way, you know, twist. So he's just quartered a hair to me. But I thought, yeah, that's still plenty, plenty broadside. This should be a good shot and everything. And I put it right there on top of his heart, took my time. Rye even made mention of it. He's like, well, you really took your time. And I, I think that's pretty much my go-to. I do take my time on those shots. But, you know, I had it right where I wanted. And I shot. I remember thinking, I don't know if he ducked or he spun into that arrow or something. I didn't. There was something I didn't like about it. You know how fast it happens in real time. You're trying to replay it back in your mind, you know, and. So I said something to the camera to that effect. I don't know if he turned into that arrow or what, but I, I didn't love it. And we watched it back, and we've seen what happened. He, he, surprisingly, he got to jump on me. I didn't expect him to because I had ranged that at 28, and it's it's getting to that range where a lot of times they'll duck you, you know, but generally it's 30-plus is what I really worry about. And he was right there at 28, and uh, we watched it back, and he, he got to drop on me. He, I don't know. What do you think he dropped, Rye? Four to six maybe? Four or five. He also turned into it a little bit. Did he a little bit? A little bit of both. Okay. I, I thought that he did when I'd watched it with, in real time, you know, but then when we watched it back, I didn't catch it. But yeah, he turned into it a little bit and ducked. So that was a little disappointing for a perfectionist. I wanted that shot to be perfect, you know, especially for Hoyt. I mean, I take a lot of pride in my shooting. You guys know that. So, you know, so it was, it was a little bit of a high hit. But the most surprising thing about the whole hunt to me was how far the deer went. You know, we're thinking, you know, he's he's quartered to a little bit. The shot's a little high. And I made mention, I said, usually these high lung hits, they don't go far. They bleed out quick on a high lung hit. You might have trouble finding blood or whatever. But we got in there, and there was just some thick cedar, so you couldn't see very far. You know, where Ryan and I were set, and we'd seen him run into those cedars, but we couldn't see anything past that. And uh, when we took up the track, I couldn't believe it. He went, He didn't even go like 40 yards. He was laying right there, <laughs> shocking to me. We're we're still looking around, you know, looking for blood, tracking blood, and these guys are looking at me like he's right there. <laughs> I'm then, just behind the camera giggling, you know. It's like, what do you see him? <laughs> <laughs> of course, you guys did a short of my, you know, my face expression at the time. I'm like, what? He's right there, you know. Just, <laughs> just bewildered, dumbfounded there, but. Yeah, it was a, it was a good time, great hunt, and uh, beautiful weather. So I was thankful just to be out there. Man, I know it was just uh, I made a joke when I got the FaceTime call from you guys. I was just like, man, I can't. We can't even go hunting. We're just getting phone call after phone call from Southern Iowa, and we're just waiting for Caleb to be the next one. I mean, it's two hunts that just show being intentional with your approach, and because I mean, you made mention you've been waiting to get into that spot where you just 
projecting you needed those conditions to get there or is it just wait for the right time of year or yeah i think all of the above i wanted some some good conditions where they should be moving i don't want to burn out my best spot and hunt in 90 degree weather you know yeah. wait for a really good time to get in there and i i think we probably could have killed there sooner too i mean it's a place that's always got a lot of activity yeah but but that was definitely the right conditions and like i said i wanted to bring rye there because i knew we'd see some stuff uh, owen told me in the dark when we were in the stand he said you know I don't normally say this, but we've got a 75, 80% chance of getting a shot today. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I like this kind of stand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you haven't been in there all year, of course, your odds go way up. And then, of course, it's a great spot already. So I was I was pretty confident, but you guys know I'm confident every time I go out. I usually say we'll probably shoot one tonight every night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eventually you'll be right, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we do it at a high level, so my expectations are right there with it, you know? Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Well, right. Having got to hunt with Mike over the years, this is your first chance getting out of the Owen. I mean, what are some of your takeaways? Obviously, filming hunts is what you're there to do. But I've always said that getting to film and edit hunts is like a, a first class seat to the most in-depth podcast or in-depth, you know, seminar you could ever go to. And I know when you were on your way home, you just said, you're like, dude, I feel super lucky to have gotten to, to witness, you know, some of the, the, the minds that are at work there. What were your takeaways getting to home with Owen over the last few days? You know, I think my biggest takeaway from Owen, it's not just the hunt, right? So it goes back, Owen, I spent a fair amount of time down at your place this summer doing off season segments and such. Seeing that side of it come together, all the Owen is constantly thinking about how it's going to unravel in the fall, whether it's the food plots, whether it's just setting a tree stand, all of that coming together and being able to go to these farms and experience it in the fall with what he's envisioning and saying is going to happen in the fall, in the summer is, is to have a vision like that with whitetails is pretty, I don't know the word. Somebody help me out with the word here. I'm not a <laughs> meticulous preparation. Yeah, it's the, the, the vision. I mean, it, it it's definitely awesome. Is. And <laughs> I mean, I, Mike has that same thing. And uh, I mean, obviously they're both extremely successful with what they do. Right. And, but they're, they're different in the same time. The Owen hunts differently than Mike. When Mike, the one thing I've learned from you, man, is get where you need to be. Sometimes, you know, don't necessarily worry about the things in between. And that's, we talked about that. No, like uh, when I hunted yesterday with trying to walk back to that stand, walking clear across the cornfield a thousand yards to get to where I thought I needed to be. Well, turns out I saw five point, wasn't where I needed to be that day, but you know, <laughs> it's where I thought I needed to be and just like taking risks sometimes, right? So that's more. Yeah, like, I mean, I don't know, you know, every farm's different. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times we've got to give something up and, uh, you know, there are, there are some perfect setups out there. But there's a lot of them that are not perfect, and you just sort of got to bite the bullet sometimes. And, um, you know, it can't all be perfect, but. That's well said, Mike. There's so many stands that are just not bulletproof. There well, so few that are is a better way to put it, really. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, it's like the segment you did on the chase there, Owen. I mean, talking about uh, when, you, when you had hung that stand over the new sign. You know, you had talked about this is the one thing I'm going to have to give up, but we'll see hunting a few times. And, I mean, do you think that if you were going to point out the most valuable thing that puts you into these positions to be able to, for lack of a better term, call your shot, do you think it's hunting these properties year in, year out, getting to see crop rotation, how it changes? Or do you think that you've gotten to a point where you can pretty well off a map, make a call, make an assumption, and then it comes together? But sure. Sure helps, but I would say probably it's the whole body of work. I mean, everything included, you know, everything you do. It, I always talk about up in your odds, and everything you do is up in your odds just a little bit more. So eventually you get to where your odds are 80, 90% and, instead of 5 or 10%, you know? Yeah. Man, heck of a way to ring in November. I don't know how else to say it. I mean, and uh, we've had not necessarily anybody on this call, but, you know, we've had some team members continue to knock bucks down and, it's just like this, the flip, the switch has been flipped. Sorry, I'm losing my mind. Can't speak tonight, I guess. Um, <laughs> the flippy switchy. The flippy switchy, exactly. So, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> any update before we get off here on Kansas? Any expectations? Yeah, what's next, there? Owen? Yeah. yeah, we are going to head to Kansas. I don't know what, exactly what my expectations are. I don't 
know of a big deer there. I mean, it doesn't mean there isn't one. I know that some made it through last year. They had, you know, trail cam pictures after the season. So there should be some nice deer around, but I don't have confirmation of that. So I guess I'll just go down there and be the camera. Yeah. Yeah. You have cameras running over there? Still? I do. Yep. I've got some yeah. cell cams running there. I think I got four or five out there. Yeah. So, yeah. And you it, think that area you are, is that rut going to be, you know, I've always heard Kansas and I've hunted Kansas a few times, a few years, but it usually is better later in the month of November. Or do you think, you, what do you expect over there? Well, that's what I'm going by is what you're saying too, Mike. I've, I've, you know, people have told me it's a few days later, the later there. So I'm, I'm expecting when we get there a week later, that it's going to be, you know, go time and be perfect timing there. But I don't know. I haven't hunted Kansas other when, when Devin and I just went down, you know, for a couple of days and we didn't even hunt then, which we we're basically observing. So sure. yeah, I don't really know what to expect as far as the rug goes, but we're going to find out. Yeah. 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 That'd be fun. Yeah. It's it'd fun be good to hunt one pre rut over here and then hunt pre rut over there too. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> What, uh, Caleb, what can we expect? Well, how are things in your neck of the woods? Got the cold front hitting in a few days. I think it's Wednesday or Thursdays when we finally get back out of the Northwest, pressure rises, something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping, gosh, I'm praying for some north winds. It's been a lot of south and a lot of east, and I, I've got some good stands for those winds. They're just like the observational sits. And um, the past few days, Casey and I, we've been sitting quite a bit, but man, we cannot find a mature buck to save our lives. I, was talking with Owen tonight. I was almost wondering, man, are there there we've lost some mature bucks over here, but are the mature bucks that are left are they just on those? Is that why we're not seeing them? Uh, I'm not sure, but we are seeing like the youngins hit it pretty hard. I mean, they're chasing does. I want to say we sat in a stand just like Owen was saying, where it's just bulletproof. I told Casey like I should darn near put a KG guarantee on this one, but we'll find out sure enough we see 20 does but we see all these bucks but um they just didn't really i mean you see groups of six does and it'd be like okay where's the buck and nowhere to be found so still waiting for the switch to be flipped but i'm sure it's right around the corner yeah yeah it's uh the rain looks like what the next two days off and on and then boom northwest wind again pressure's gonna skyrocket and should be rocking i think that's if i'm not mistaken november 7th is when it's all supposed to be kind of turning the turning the page so obviously any day to be in the tree in november is a good day to be out there but from a condition standpoint it definitely looks like it's gonna be on the flip side of what it is currently but anybody got any parting words of wisdom for our listeners as we continue to navigate our way through november <laughs> that's right that is right well i appreciate you guys sharing the stories like i said tomorrow we've got devin's buck kill on the monday main show there on youtube gavin's kill will be on that same episode and then following that at some point we'll have owens so very excited to uh, watch both of those unfold and hopefully the action only continues so Good luck out there if you guys are hunting and otherwise from there. Thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.